A year stuck in quarantine with someone is the equivalent of four years. That's according to a new survey from Groupon, and they partnered with a uh, mathematician to calculate all the extra time people have spent together. It's been a long, long time. So how is your relationship better than ever, or are you ready to bail? We need a relationship expert to tell us about it. Good thing Spicy Mari of the Spicy Life is standing by in Los Angeles to talk with us. Spicy, thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Happy let's, to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Let, let's start off with the people who, who haven't gone out. A lot of people haven't gone out in a while because of the quarantine, yeah. staying in the house. I know somebody that I work with that's like that. But w w what's your advice to those ready to Don't jump back out there post-COVID? We're not, you're not the only person on the screen. I might know Mari personally, too. <laughs> Go ahead, Mari. <laughs> Get them together, Spicy. <laughs> My advice is, and congratulations, because you are a newlywed, right? So um, you are off the single market, yes. so congratulations, Mike. Yes. But um, my advice to those who are single, ready to mingle, or people who've been trapped in the house, the way that I advise my clients at The Spicy Life is that they really need to be open to communication, making new relationships, putting themselves out there, taking advantage of dating apps. Right now, locations are starting to open up. So as much as you can get out, get out the house based on your hobbies, right? So if you are someone who's looking for a mate or a partner that loves to hike or is into animals, you wanna make sure that you're going to the animal park or going on those trails, mm. really getting outside, going to the gym, getting back you know, into your fitness now that the gyms are back open um, and introducing yourself, really stepping outside of your comfort zone and making friends again. Cause we kind of forgot what it was like to like make friends and so getting reacclimated to this, you know, environment where we actually get to have interpersonal connection and connect with others. <laughs> Let's talk Listen about when, when people seem, <laughs> are you, uh, to stay in toxic <laughs> relationships because you, yes. you do, in all seriousness, you see that and it occurs to me that for so many, it's just they're, they're normal, right? And they become accustomed to it. So let's say that even during quarantine, a lot of relationships have been tested, right? Um, being stuck with someone for so long, it really tested how strong your relationship is. The dynamics of whether, you know, you can go get through conflict resolution during this time and being in someone's space. When it comes to toxic relationships, though, this is when we see tumultuous mm. relationships where there's more negative yeah. than positive. We don't mm -hmm. see each other, you know, pouring into one another or couples with the same definition of love. And so oftentimes what happens mm -hmm. is that you stay in the relationship longer mm -hmm. than you should and you wind up compromising a lot of your core values. This is why I always advise my clients yeah. that we need to be clear on our mm -hmm. core values and our deal breakers so that when they are crossed, we can communicate those. And if our partner is not willing to work on those things that we need, we got to go. Absolutely. Yeah, uh, a reason, season, lifetime. You can choose happiness out there so you got a podcast uh Absolutely. called the spicy like podcast yeah. and spicy your fundamentals a yeah. uh, spicy is an acronym self passion <laughs> intimacy communication and learning to say yes now where were you when i was dating yes. with the whole yes thing on the dating scene but what, what's the what's the yes 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 child yes honey what, what's the yes part mean Partners need to say yes to one another or when you're dating you need to be open to new opportunities it really is around um letting go of limiting beliefs, things that are holding you back, stepping outside of your comfort zone. We don't say yes enough. You mm -hmm. know, society teaches us to get comfortable with the word no. And while I do believe in making sure that we have boundaries and making sure that, you know, we are respected and cherished, when it comes to the word yes, it's really about, okay, today I'm gonna put my relationship goal in front of the way that I feel, because my emotions are temporary. I'm gonna step outside ah. of my norm and take this leap. I'm going to say yes to the unknown, yes to the invitation that I've been putting off, yes mm. to, you know, the date that I've been putting to the side, yes to, you know, g getting my makeover now that, you know, we can get out the house and get Maybe our nails and life. hair done. I'm going to say yes. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> yes. yes to live your life. So, <laughs> yeah, live your life. On the, on the, and we're almost out of time, but I want to talk about your most recent episode of the Spicy Life podcast where this word narcissist comes up a lot. I mean, I constantly yes. have girlfriends mm -hmm. calling me up saying, oh, he was a narcissist. He was a nar How do you tell the difference? <laughs> because there are 
spicy. There's some narcissists out there, okay? But how do you tell the difference between somebody who just like wants to, you know, take some selfies and live their life and maybe they're not a narcissist? You know, when you want to be clear on, you know, what this disorder is, you don't want to just throw it around. You want to make sure that you have been, you know, diagnosed before, you know, you term yourself, uh, you know, narcissist or you accuse someone else of that. But the difference is sometimes we are in these, you know, toxic relationships or tumultuous relationships. Let's be clear, I was not. Okay, let's. No, 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 I know. I know, you, trust me, I know, you got it going on, girl. <laughs> but when it comes it's to relationships, you want to make sure that your needs are being met, your needs are being met, and that yeah. when you see that there are signs that, you know, your boundaries are being crossed and someone is trying to control or manipulate you, um, a lot of mm-hmm. gaslighting and toxic going on, you want to make sure that you, you know, reevaluate and assess, like, why you're in the relationship. I like to always recommend my clients do kind of a mm-hmm. SWOT analysis when they start to question if they're in a toxic relationship or if they're with a narcissist. What are the relationship strengths? What are the relationship weaknesses? What are the opportunities for growth? And what are the threats if we don't grow? If I stay longer than I should, what are the threats? Mm -hmm. And so you really have to take this into account. And when you're dealing with a narcissist, you know, that's somebody who can be very manipulative and into self and not be able to empathize with your needs or the emotions that you have and not really being able to self-regulate and provide a healthier environment for the relationship. So you want to get out if you're in a relationship exactly. with a narcissist. Yes, if they're oh, not yeah, getting help, so you want to get out. Regulate hey, thing. I, that's true for Sharon. Uh, but before we let you go, no, not just for Sharon. I just bust her, you <laughs> know what, sometimes. Real yeah. quick, real quick, real quick. Uh, I, I got to get this I'm in. What unbothered. advice would you give to somebody, let's just say somebody that, that hasn't been out in a while, spends a lot of time with her kid, maybe that's nine or 10 years old, uh, <laughs> has a lot of pets at home, <laughs> And order is like Uber Eats all the time. Hey, what, what advice would you give for somebody hey, like that? <laughs> I know what he's, he's doing, do? Jared. He's not going to catch me. I see what he's doing. Okay. Step one, don't um, take the bait. It's... Unbothered. <laughs> <laughs> I would get in a positive mindset, right? Looking at everything that I have to offer. Who am I? What do I want? And what do I have to offer? Yes. And then I would start putting that out there. I would really start marketing myself as this, you know, eligible Mm. bachelorette that is single, ready to mingle and, you know, showing up in my authentic self, making sure that I hold the people who I'm dating accountable and making sure that I know, you know, I have my list of like things that are necessary Mm -hmm. for me to be in a healthy relationship. I like to tell uh, all my singles to build a pizza and that's the the crust, the sauce and the toppings. What is the foundation that you need? Mm -hmm. And then the sauce is how they treat you. And then the toppings is what is, what do you need to be physically attracted, right? So build your pizza first, yes. then start going out there and dating. And if he doesn't match the pizza, on to the next slice. Mm. Stick that in the oven real <laughs> quick and spice, eat it. Spicy, Light spicy tips. Spicy oh, tips right there. Stop eating the pizza I first. Love it. <laughs> right. <laughs> you might want She's to pick something a, the different person I'm talking about is a good part woman. of the problem. <laughs> yeah. I, I see us from the waist stop woman. here, spicy. <laughs> Thank you, you so much. We appreciate you. And you know what? Yeah. I hope you'll come back, and and maybe Mike will be quiet next oh, time, so that you. I can really get the full essence of um, everything you're you're imparting. That's a great podcast too. But 